Hi there, my front end friends. As you may or may not know, I have a Discord community where people can ask for help with problems that they're running into. And there's one mistake that people seem to make over and over and over again, which is using viewport units for all sorts of things. And most of the time, they're a terrible choice. So let's take a look at some of the problems that people run into with them and better solutions for what they're trying to do. So one of the first things that I see surprisingly often is this <laughs> right here, which is about putting viewport units on HTML, or instead of this, sometimes it's the body as well. And especially 100 viewport width, it's not exactly what you might think it is. And it also depends on the operating system and the browser you're using. So let's jump into VS Code and see why this is a problem to begin with. And it's mostly around this, even though the height 100 VH can also cause a couple of problems. And we're gonna look at issues and how we can solve them here. And the issue with this one to start with, if we jump over to the browser, is we get horizontal scrolling. And you might not get this if you're on a browser that has a floating scroll bar, but I'm on Windows, which in Chrome at least, and in general doesn't have it. So if I have scrolling content and I have to be able to scroll like that, that will give me this because VW does not take into account the space underneath the scroll bar. So your HTML or your body or wherever you're putting this on ends up being wider than the actual viewport since we have that space there and that is extremely annoying, but it's also not really serving a purpose. The solution here is to not do anything at all because the HTML is already taking up the full viewport anyway, or you see the same thing with your body, same thing, there's no reason to set the viewport at 100 VW. Now there are some hacks and some interesting things that you can actually do with 100 VW, but for the most part, I just wouldn't ever declare it because it's very rare that you'd actually need something like that. And it's one of those cases that maybe you run into an edge case here or there where it can be useful, but for the most part, you're probably better off just completely avoiding it. Now, you might be saying, well, I need a height 100 VH or a min height 100 VH. And that sort of comes in with this question here that was asking about the WebKit fill available, which was sort of a solution to the 100 VH because the height of 100 VH can actually cause a lot of problems. So I've added some CSS here and we're gonna go back to the HTML in a second to see what it's doing. But the main thing is we have this height 100 VH on the header. And that is this header right here. Again, height 100 VH should be take up the entire viewport. And then inside of that header, we have this div of with a class of bottom on it. And this has some really important information in it that we wanna make sure is visible, but it's always right at the bottom of the viewport. Coming back here, I just did a position absolute on there, which is why we have a position relative of this. And then we've just I've added some styling on it to make sure that it shows up there. So if we jump back to our page, you can see I have this header area that's taking up the entire viewport. And then down here at the bottom, that very important thing that must be stuck to the bottom for some reason. And when I scroll down, it's there, but it's perfect. It just lines up with the bottom of the page exactly where I want it to be. And then it just, you know, everything works because my header area has that height of 100 VH. And even if we reduce that, the height is always staying at 100 VH. So we always have 100% of the viewport height. It's exactly what you want it to be except if you go onto mobile. So as you can see right here, we have the mobile view of this and that red bar that has that really important information in it, you can't actually see it. And that's because of the address bar at the top of Chrome that I have right here on my phone. And 100 VH doesn't take into account those viewport elements because as you move up, the viewport element actually moves off the screen. And so the 100 viewport height is pretending that, that the address bar is not actually there because at one point the address bar can move away. And so when the page first loads, the address bar is there because we haven't started scrolling yet. And this is the same on all browsers, whether the address bar is at the top or the bottom, we've run into problems like this at times. Now, one potential fix for that is to use DVH, which is dynamic viewport height. So this will adapt. If that UI address bar is there or other elements are there, it's going to take up the 100% space. But if I scroll and that bar disappears, it's going to readjust that to take up the, the new space because it's a dynamic viewport height. This could cause problems along the way though, because it does get a little bit janky when you stop scrolling, when it readjusts everything. So the alternative for this is SVH. Now what SVH is doing is it's a small viewport height. And what that means is it's assuming those UI elements like our address bar are always in view. So it's always going to be a little bit smaller. So once we scroll, and that thing disappears, we won't be at 100% viewport height anymore. But in a way, does that really matter? Because we've moved off from there anyway, so you can't really tell. It depends on the use case and exactly what you need to do, but those are a couple of options that we do have. Now jumping back to the code to actually take a look at doing this. So as I said, we had the 100 VH that we don't like, so the other option is DVH, which is the dynamic viewport height, or SVH. And 
One thing that's interesting with these is if I have SVH and we look at the desktop version of it, nothing is going to be different because there are no UI elements that can come in on a desktop view. So it's not going to impact things on this level, which might be exactly what we need. But there are issues with this as well, which is browser support, while being very good, isn't quite there yet. So one option is to actually have both and have the VH first and then the small, the dynamic viewport height second. Uh, if the browser understands this one, it will overwrite that and won't use it. But if it doesn't understand the SVH or a DVH here, it's just going to go and use this as the fallback which may be not ideal, but it's a small percentage of browsers that will only continue to get smaller as time goes on and browser support increases for these new viewport units. Now while we have dynamic viewport height and the small viewport height, there is also the LVH, which is the large viewport height, which just assumes like that's sort of like what we started with that's always going to take up all the available space. And just before you start wondering about the first option with the um, scroll bar issue with VW, if we could use something like dynamic viewport width or, di or small viewport width to deal with that, sadly it does not work. I've already tested it out. Now there is another option here if you do not like this idea and that's to use a height as a percentage. The downside of that is for something to have a height as a percentage, it has to be based on the height of something else. So the parent has to have a height. So in this case, my body would have to have a defined height. And for this to have a defined height, you'd probably want 100%. You'd also need your HTML to have a defined height. So that's why you often see things that have your HTML comma body height 100%. And then because the body has the height 100%, I could actually come on here and put a min height 100% on the header. Uh, or a height 100%, they would both work. Now in general, this isn't the end of the world. The problem with this is the more you get nested, the more issues, you know, the more things you're actually declaring heights on to actually get it to work, which is just really annoying to do. Um, and I've seen some issues actually crop up with double scroll bars, even on one of my own projects once, because I had some things going on uh, and some other little issues that can potentially come up because of this. I'm not saying it's not the right choice. It can be a very good way to go. It's been used for a long time, but just I think moving forward, things like SVH might be the optimal solution for a lot of the problems that have been caused so far. Now we're gonna jump over to CodePen for this next example. And this one is linked down in the description if you wanna play, uh, play around with it. And what I've done with this is I've basically set viewport units up for everything. And I see this all the time too, to create these fluid types of layouts that just, the layout just flows with everything else. And when you first discover this, it can feel magical, but it's not magical, it's very problematic. And we're gonna go through some of the different issues that are, are in here uh, that, that I set up. So one of them is things like a font size set in just viewport units. This is a very bad practice that I see done a lot. Uh, and just to show why, one of the reasons is, as you can see, my paragraph text here is getting like super, super small. <laughs> like that becomes unreadable. If you're on a phone, it could be really, really small. And at one point things get like ridiculously large and just don't look very good either. So everything is fluid, but it's, you're hitting like these points where it just doesn't really work, even though it, maybe on your screen, you're on a laptop, the range that you're working in is, it looks fine. But when you start pushing things more to different extremes, it just gets worse and worse along the way. And there's another big problem with this. And we're just gonna switch this over to a live view for a second. And that problem is, here's where everything is gigantic again. But if I zoom in or out on the page, notice that nothing is changing. You can see that little zoom thing is zooming in and zooming out, but there is nothing changing on the layout. And that's because everything here is set with viewport units, which is an exaggeration. But websites are supposed to be able to zoom in and zoom out. But you, I'm sure you've seen people that have font sizes on their phones that are really big, maybe your parents or grandparents, and they've set like they, they've changed the default settings on their phone to increase the font sizes. People will do that on their OS level or their browser level as well. We want to respect those things, or you just end up on a website where the font size is too small and you want to zoom in on it. If you have font sizes set with VW, that does nothing because as you zoom in. The, view, the viewport width isn't actually changing. We're just trying to zoom in on the things that are on the page. But if everything is set with viewport units, we're, we're stuck in this world where for some reason it's scrolling up and down <laughs> once I've scrolled a little bit, but nothing's actually changing size. So that is a big issue. And we'll reset my zoom. And so while it feels very fluid, it causes a lot more problems than it's actually worth. And for most of these things, it's not 
really need it, right? Like I don't need two columns to exist on a phone for something like that. And if you do want to use viewport units for text, instead of just using a viewport unit, what I'd strongly encourage to do is use a clamp. And there's even some issues around clamp as well, but we could set a minimum, say three rem. I could set a maximum of say six rem. And then in the middle, I have to provide a value here and we could say something like five viewport width. Often I'll also encourage to say plus one rem and you do not need to use a calc within a clamp. It, the math is just available to us. And what that's doing is it's setting a minimum and a maximum. So as we get smaller at one point, it will never get smaller. As we get bigger at one point, my six rem is pretty big. Uh, let's jump over to the live view again. But now we can see as I'm zooming out or I'm zooming in, things are actually changing sizes because the rem unit is being changed as I do that for that one thing, not for everything, but it's an improvement already. And of course, we'd wanna go through all the different text on this and make that available to be able to be zoomed in and out as well. And even for things like our margins, it could be really cool to use viewport units to set them, but again, putting them within a clamp to sort of set minimum and maximum and have a bit more constraint on our layouts can really go a long way. Uh, for here, not keeping this as some fluid element that stays like that, but maybe we change the font sizes here to clamps. So now I get something that's a little bit more, like the font sizes are changing, but it's not as drastic and they're getting maximum, there's like a maximum and minimum value that are coming into these now that I've set those over to clamp. And over here, well, it's great to have that like fixed thing that's two columns. It, it really isn't the best thing in the world, in my opinion. So for something like that, it's probably best if we actually change things within a media query. So if I really want two columns for this when we're at larger screen sizes, no problem at all. We have a lot of room for our text, but what we can do is use the media query here where we're only setting up columns when we're on a larger screen size. So with the smaller ones, the items stack. And also before I had a gap of five VW, which might've been great for the limited area I'm testing things on. But if someone were on a really big screen, that could be a huge space between the items. So maybe we could use a clamp or a min function where it means choose the smaller of the two values. So as long as 5VW is smaller, it's gonna keep on using that 5VW. But if you're on a really large screen and 5VW is bigger than 2REM, well, it means it's gonna stop it from growing at 2REM or 3REM or whatever you want your biggest size to be. And a lot of the time what we end up using viewport units for is to help with that fluidity that I was sort of saying was a bad idea right now because it just seems like this magical nice trick that we wanna use. But in reality, a lot of the time, there's better ways of approaching things. And a lot of the time I see people using viewport units all over the place like this is because they're having trouble making something responsive. And this sort of feels like that easy way to do it because we're reacting to the viewport. But there's much simpler approaches to making responsive layouts. And if making responsive layouts is something that you really do find a struggle, I do have a completely free course called Conquering Responsive Layouts. It's all about getting into the mindset and understanding and working with the browser as much as possible to be able to make your layouts responsive without much of a struggle. If you're interested in that, there is a link just down below. And with that, I would really like to thank my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Michael, Patrick, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.